guys and welcome back to my channel i just want to firstly start by saying thank you so much for all the support um it was actually overwhelming how many people was just like they can relate they found strength they found peace so i'm so happy about that and i'm so excited to be back on youtube so hey and hello to all my new subscribers and literally after every video during the video if there's anything that you want to see from me please write in the comments below if you are someone that is just returning to my video but you have not yet subscribed um excuse me why do you not want to be part of my community please yeah what have i said i said we're all about self-development we're growing this year things are changing this year and if you hear my son in the background i apologize as we go through everything will get better the sound quality will get better everything okay so just bear with me also guys i feel like i really want to start doing outfit of the days let me know if you want to see like full outfits like full on do you get it how i wear it because i just feel like it's wasted like tops and stuff sometimes when you're not showing it all on um youtube today we're going to speak about having adhd and being in a relationship being in a marriage and the challenges that you can face some of the good parts as well because i think having adhd myself i think we're amazing okay i don't want it to be anything negative i'm not a psychiatrist disclaimer i am not a therapist i am not i'm not an adhd coach i'm not any of these things but i got adhd and i've had it my whole life and i do know a few things like let's just start so one of the things that i think having adhd so adhd is atten attention deficit hyperactivity disorder let me let wait let's make sure that was right all right because i was right so obviously i spoke about the other day adhd and i said most when we see children with adhd we like we associate it to hyperactivity usually to a child that's quite disruptive in the class etc with females with women it goes quite undiagnosed because um it doesn't always come out and show itself in those ways in women so a lot of the times it goes under the rug and a lot of people don't know that we are actually we actually have adhd like in my case so i didn't know 100 percent that i had adhd going through my whole childhood i just thought i was very unorganized that i lost things i thought i was um always called lazy i was called all these names which also attach themselves to you and can really affect how you see yourself in like society basically because you're always just feeling like you're not good enough you're doing something wrong why can't you do things as quick as the other person why can't you maybe clean up like another person why are you so so um adhd let me just quickly give you a brief overview of what it actually means I will be looking at my phone. Symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder include a short attention span, constantly fidgeting and acting without thinking. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder can often be treated with medicines and talking therapies. It's not clear what causes attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but it tends to run in families. The thing about it is, it could, so many different forms and there's so many different, like I'm not gonna be the person that is gonna tell you all about ADHD because cha, I'll get it wrong, but you can Google it you can go onto youtube there's so much resources that tell you all about adhd but today we are talking about adhd in terms of a relationship so if the symptoms are like i said disorganization um, poor time management skills problems focusing on a task trouble multitasking excessive activity or restlessness poor planning low frustration tolerance okay and adhd can also be associated with um, emotional like being like your emotions being up up and down not being able to like regulate your emotions and also sometimes people with adhd can have um they very they find it very hard to take criticism and it can make you feel like you're always being rejected and there is a term for that but again we're going to go into terminologies of everything okay so i feel like i didn't know that going into my marriage okay and I feel like that is why I blamed my ex-husband a lot for things that happened because he was on the spectrum and I felt like that was why we was having issues. And although at times those issues 
were a lot to deal with were very challenging and because he also was undiagnosed he didn't know how maybe to um cope he didn't have coping mechanisms for the things that he was going through and the ways to express himself the way he would need to to be able to maintain a relationship because it's like obviously a lot harder than just maintaining a normal relationship i feel like the same with adhd i didn't know i like i didn't know the symptoms of adhd as such like i didn't go into it look into it i wasn't medicated for it or anything like that so i always would blame certain things on my ex-husband now looking back i think i have come to a mature point and i've spoke to you look you guys about it i was very childish and also understanding that okay with adhd my emotions were so up and down that it was ridiculous i had no like there's being emotional and there is having no regulation on your emotions there's acting in absolute impulse and i find i still find it very hard now but i'm having therapy i've had an adhd coach so i found ways to like when i'm going through you could call it an adhd meltdown as such again my terminology might not be correct but this is how i speak about it okay so when i'm going through like a, a moment where maybe something's happened with my partner for example they said something to me it's a trigger instead of me to take a second breathe listen to every single word they said sometimes you will pick out one word so the person could have said it's so annoying when you leave your socks on the floor but to me it would just be like all i hear is you're annoying you're annoying but that's not what they're saying they're saying you're annoying when you leave your socks on the floor do you get what i mean but i will be picking at the fact that they've said you're annoying and that will be ringing in my head and that will then cause me to blow up about that thing and that is not the whole picture of what they're trying to say. Does that make sense? I know that was like a, a weird, like a weird analogy, but yeah. So yeah, that was, that's something that really, I really struggled with. Like I would go from zero to 100 real quick. Okay. One thing that I've learned now is that when I go from zero to 100, I literally type a whole essay in my phone of how I feel, how angry I am, how upset I am just to get it out. And then I just leave that text message for 10 minutes usually when i read back over it that is not what i want to say i delete it and i carry on with my day but i still find it hard i'm not gonna lie it's not it's it's a work in progress and every day i'm working towards being better in my emotions and also understanding that not everything's like to hurt me to reject me to make me feel less than etc so yeah that's one thing that i feel like was very challenging another thing disorganization to the highest okay leaving everything last minute um in the video next week i will talk about more about uh being someone being on the spectrum and being married yeah and i think you'll see that a lot of people that have aspergers are very routine they have structure they're very logical and like i'm telling you adhd is the absolute opposite so i'm disorganized i haven't i don't have structure i'm very go with the wind i'm very last minute which can really be great in some settings because i work brilliantly under pressure because i have to work under pressure because i didn't plan or get anything ready in time and i know a lot of these things i'm saying people will be like oh my gosh that's me and a lot of the times we are like that but it's maybe not to the same degree as when you have adhd so look deeper into the symptoms if it's something that you think you have um, another thing that i think really did affect my marriage um emotions um in terms of obviously they say a woman should take care of the household and keep the house clean i was terrible after i broke up with my ex-husband i got cleaner and i can't explain to you how that changed my life not only did it change my life it also taught me how to be how to clean a house because Although I lived with different people, although, and we can get into that in other videos if you want to know about my childhood, my upbringing, etc. And how I've managed to get to where I am now, because let's just face it, with the statistics and the things that I went through, it shouldn't be like this, yeah? So, um, yeah, so in terms of like tidying up the house, my house was always messy. My house was never a home. I My house became a home when I had lions. So before that, I didn't really have a living room. I'd always be in my bedroom. To even get into my bedroom, you'd be pushing clothes like behind the door. It was terrible. And again, I think if I was with someone maybe that was not on the spectrum, it would have been a lot easier because that's also some things that my ex-husband struggled with. And not just because he's on the spectrum, but also just because of how he was so 
just because of how men are sometimes, yeah? And not all the time. Don't. Don't comfort me. Don't comfort me, yeah? But just how men are sometimes, yeah? So, literally, I just... It felt almost felt like for me that I was... I... Like, that... I can honestly say that was probably one of the hardest parts of my marriage. Like, trying to be that domestic person. Um... I realise now that I also thrive with routine. Though I have ADHD, I thrive with routine. If I have a routine, then I can usually stick to that routine. But because growing up, I didn't have much routine, I didn't actually know that until after, until like lockdown. And I brought a routine with a lion and what I was doing within the house and with my ex-husband. And that's when I realised, oh my gosh, I actually do a lot better with routine. So again, not cleaning, not cooking, like domestically, yeah terrible i think that also i would say had a huge effect on the way i um was regarding sexual things i think because mainly because of my emotions were so up and down it, i feel like as women we are turned on by our brain our mind we're very like you know what you our love languages how you treat us and my love languages acts of service and all of that kind of stuff and i think because i struggled so much with my emotions i was up at, like i went for a lot of depression so i was regularly you probably can hear lions screaming i am sorry <laughs> but yeah i was very up and down with my emotions so yeah it was just like you know when you come into a home and you don't know what like it's so frosty because you don't know what sort of person you're gonna get i think that was a lot but i can say some pluses are for me like i'm not gonna sit here and just talk about myself like you know that it was just challenges being with someone with ADHD because we are the best and I'm yeah I said it what not joking <laughs> but we are the best like we are fun we have great personalities we are spontaneous we like to make people happy we are absolute empaths so we empathize feel pain want to like try and make you the happiest we will go above and beyond to make sure you are happy yeah that's us okay you're never gonna have a dull moment the house is when like i said i wasn't going for my depression stages because it's very up and down when i am feeling up i am going to be the like i bring the home you know the home that feeling of like just fun and jokes and laughter that is i that is me that was me a lot to do with my personality but a lot to do also with my adhd like i said i work well under pressure if you're going through something and you're pressurized i can come up with a solution i can you know be like all right let's do this let's do that very much like that i'm creative i am so creative that sometimes it hurts because with adhd you can start a hundred things in your mind you can be so passionate and then from that passion we are very great at hyper focusing which is something that also people on the spectrum asperger's people have they got hyper focus adhd people have it too but we also are easily distracted um oh i just thought of another thing i but i don't know if this actually affected my marriage but different relationships friendships i've seen that this can be an effect i do not my attention is all like you could be talking to me people would be like oh my god she's so rude you'd be talking to me and then i walk off mid-sentence not because i want to walk off mid-sentence sentence but i just remembered something and i'm like oh and then you're just looking at me like so imagine being in a relationship also we talk over you we, you'll be talking blah, 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 blah. like that's adhd people i <laughs> will be talking over you if we haven't kind of learned to okay wait and i think these are all things i'm learning now which i'm so grateful for like I, people i'll be talking and i'll be like i want to talk i want to talk but i'll stop i'll listen i'll listen to what they're saying and then i'll carry on so yeah these are all things that can can be a challenge and being on your phone being on my phone can be a challenge i'll be watching tv on my phone it's just a distraction i'll be playing ludo on my phone while watching tv i'll be like so as a partner sometimes you just want the person's attention full attention you know like give me your attention and i can't always do that um i'm just thinking have i forgot anything so one second so some things that they say people with adhd so i'll read it you can feel a partner that's with someone with adhd you can feel lonely you can feel ignored you can feel unappreciated you can feel tired of taking care of the person. I don't know if this affected my marriage because I feel like 
um, being on the spectrum. These are also some things that are cross crossover, if that makes sense. And um, that's why I think at times I had a lot of anxiety with my ex because I was take, trying to take care of a lot of things that are unnatural to me. Like I would be the one that's like trying to book flights or trying to stay on top of bills or, and I felt that was quite hard. I'm not talking about paying the bills, but just managing the bills. Sometimes we don't follow through on promises. We'll say things and not do them. I think that's really it. And again, I would say anyone with ADHD or anyone with a partner that is on the spectrum or has some sort of mental health, uh, I feel like I would just say go to therapy and find a therapist that specializes in ADHD or Asperger's or autism or whatever it is, this practice, whatever it is you have, find a therapist if you can find a coach. And if you can't afford those things, go online. There's so many resources that have helped me along the way to even see where, see myself. You know, sometimes you just need to see yourself and understand, okay, that's why I do that. I don't do that because of this, I do that because of this. Um, there's a magazine that I read, I will leave it in the description below. If you feel like you have this, if you have this, if you've got any tips or suggestions for anyone, please write it below. And again, like I said, next week we'll be back talking about being with someone who has um, autism and, or Asperger's to be correct, has Asperger's and how that is and how it is being married to them. But yeah, let me know your opinions, thoughts, whatever in the comments below. Love you guys and I will see you again next week. I feel like I should post two times a week. What do you think? I feel like I can and I want to. I don't know if the lighting's changed but the sun's going down so maybe that's why the lighting looks a bit different. Um, yeah, but let me know what you think. Yeah, how this is all resonating with you. Love you.